Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Santa's Game, and we're playing a brand new game today called Rogue Tower. Now, my channel does not have a ton of tower defense videos on it, but anyone who knows me in real life or has talked to me even a little bit about games knows I like tower defense type stuff. It's one of the main reasons I like Seven Days to Die, because you get to build a horde base and defend against waves of zombies a la tower defense style. So this game is right up my alley. Um, I love Balloon's Tower Defense. I love Defense Grid. I love Sanctum. All kinds of dungeon defenders. I've played lots and lots and lots of tower defense games. I probably have like 30 tower defense games on my phone. Um, I love them. They're great. I'm not the best at them, but they're a lot of fun. So this is a tower defense game that is also a roguelike and a rogue light, which means you get meta progression upgrades as you do runs. So you finish runs and you get upgrades that you apply to your count level that makes future runs stronger. And you have a customizable progression within each run based on a randomized set of card draws at the end of each level. So it is really cool. Um, let's take a look at a few things before we hop into our first game, just to get all on the same page. I've watched quite a few YouTube videos, but there are some things in here that I think we should cover real quick before we jump in. So, uh, Tower Master Guide. This kind of gives you a layout of what the different things mean, right? Um, so health, obviously that is health. Armor and shield. Those all function differently. Towers have three stats. Health damage, armor damage, shield damage. Some specialize in certain things, and you can actually customize each tower to specialize more or less in any particular thing. They also naturally level up as they do damage to that thing. So if a tower is hitting a shielded unit and doing damage to the shield, it is going to slowly increase its ability to do damage to shields. Natural leveling progression. You can also rush those things too, so that is kind of neato. In addition to that, there's also some other stats that the enemies have. Obviously, they have different DOS that can be applied. There's burning, fire, and poison within the game. There's also freezing, but that's not a dot, it's just a slow. There is fortification as well, and haste. So what do fortification and haste do? Fortification and haste and slow. Enemies can fortify and haste themselves and their allies, and your towers can slow them. Hasted and slows enemies move, slowed enemies move faster or slower depending on how hasted or slowed they are. Fortified enemies take negative 5 base damage for as long as they are fortified, so that is important to know. If you see this gray bar above an enemy's head, it means they're taking reduced damage. If you see this yellow bar above their head, it means they are going to move extra fast. So you can choose to have your towers target the fastest enemy. And that is a way to counteract that, especially if you have a tower that slows enemies, targeting the fastest enemy, you can make them move the same speed as everything else. Okay, basics out of the way. There's also a monster manual. At the moment, I haven't done any runs, so all I can see is the little goblin. As we go through and we fight different enemies, it'll show the other enemies in the monster manual. Okay. Let's go ahead and play one. Oh, first, this is the meta progression upgrade tree. I know you can't read anything on it, but I just want to give you an idea of the scope of it. Okay. Um, the yellow stuff are the individual card draws that you unlock throughout the run, like I was talking about earlier. And the blue cards are ones that will permanently increase your account power. So we have, for instance, a whole section that increases your card draw when you level up. We have a whole section that has gold bonuses that will help you get gold and treasury accumulated just a little bit quicker. Sorry, my cat jumped up on the computer desk. There's a whole section here dedicated to mana. Some towers use mana to fire. This will help make that a little bit easier. There's a whole section here dedicated to making your tower have more hit points or be able to repair hit points. This little subcategory here is all dedicated to generically increasing the effect of different debuffs. So any tower that applies bleed, these cards will modify the bleed effect. Any tower that applies fire, these cards will modify the fire debuff effect. Any card that applies poison, you get the idea. Now some towers by default do fire or bleed or poison, but some can be given those and don't normally. For instance, the mortar tower, you can spec it out to bleed or poison enemies. They don't do that by default, but once they are able to do that, 
they'll benefit from these cards. These ones here are building improvements that you can put on the land. So Mana Siphon Mine, Mana Bank, Haunted House University. These are all individual towers or structures that you place on the map that help your economy or your function of your game in some way or another. Those are pretty cool. You have to unlock these with experience, which you get by completing runs. And then this section down here will make them either give you more gold with a downside or you can steal life with a downside. Uh, oh, steal mana was a downside, my bad. It says life steal, but it really should say mana steal, I guess. That's interesting. All right. And then these are all the different towers you can unlock. So Ballista, um, Mortar, and Tesla Coil are there by default. And then we have the ability to unlock the Frost Keep, Flamethrower, Poison Sprayer, Shredder, Encampment, and Lookout, Radar, Obelisk, and Particle Cannon. Now I have to unlock these on the account side before they'll show up in the game. So quite a bit of depth and replayability to this game. Um, really excited. Let's go ahead and get in. We're going to start off with a single lane defense, which means there's only going to be one direct path into our tower. Now that path can split many times throughout the random generation of the map, but just one tower or one path into the tower itself. I'm not sure how loud this game will be. I turned down the sound by default. I actually don't hear it at all. Maybe I turned it down a little too much. Huh, that's weird. There's no sound. Okay, well, um, let me pause my recording real quick and see if I have something muted on my computer. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Okay, I think that should be about the right volume level. Um, I'll adjust it after the first recording if it's too loud or too quiet, but I think that should be about right. I am going to click to show damage numbers, show condition messages, and give dot projectile uh, effects. All right. So we're going to start off by placing some blisters. Blisters are your basic tower. Obviously, we don't want to take damage right at the beginning. Um, so I'm actually just going to place one right there to start. I might actually take damage. Nope. Okay, cool. Um, that was actually still, honestly, a little bit loud. I think the sound effects are too loud. There we go. All right. So another interesting thing is as you place units, the higher elevation they are, the more range and the more damage they do. So there's a decent amount of strategy with that as well. So you can see that indicated by the plus three, plus two, plus one, or just standard setting, right? Um, so that is definitely something to keep in mind as you're placing things. Now I'm going to save my plus threes for my strongest towers, which quite frankly are not my ballistas. Um, but I'm going to place ballistas on plus twos and plus ones as far forward as I can. Actually, probably just plus ones. We do want to get a small number of them down to start. Just to make sure, well, we'll do some plus twos too. Just to make sure anything that does sneak by will get sniped out and won't make it through to our tower. We also want to kind of stagger where they're at a little bit so they're not all attacking at the exact same time. And we're going to change the progress priority. Or we're going to change the priority to uh, lowest health on the ones that are at the front. That way they can kind of pick off the the things that are close to death. And then the ones that are not at the front, I'm going to leave on progress, which means it's going to hit the ones that are the furthest forward. Hopefully that'll work out pretty well. All right, let's go ahead and expand. We should be way stronger than we need to be at this point in time. And that music is really loud when you start those rounds. All right. There we go. Oh, this is cool. Um, these things up here are the houses. When you put towers next to them, they generate extra passive gold every time the tower fires. All right, 
So we have our first customization, uh, bolt head bolts, all ballistas gain one health damage, all ballistas gain one range with longbow or mortar, launch explosive shells over long distances. Mortars are just really good to start, especially because we only have three tower types to start. We're definitely going to utilize the mortar, so let's go ahead and select that. And then we're looking for high elevations to place it on. A lot of the mortar range is going to be wasted here, so I don't know for sure if I want to do that to start. Um, but we definitely want to get a plus two one right there as soon as we can afford it. Let's see, plus two. Looks like plus two here or plus two up here are our two best bets. We'll probably go right here with our first one. That way it can go all the way back to the tower entrance. Let's go ahead and expand out again. They're so cute. Alright, so you can see the get to the tower, and then it has a little brown bar above their head. That's that haste buff we were talking about earlier. Alright, let's go ahead and place our first mortar. And we have our first split, which means we're going to start getting double the number of enemies right now. Looks like we also have iron veins on the map. So if we get the mine, um, the mine tower unit thing, it's going to allow us to do some repairs to our tower's health. That's kind of cool. I think we're going to have the mortar target the slowest and then most armor. Actually, let's start with most armor because it has a high armor multiplier. So it does more armor damage than anything else. So let's have it prioritize that. And then after that, we'll have it prioritize, let's say most health and then fastest is the last thing. Okay. So upgrades, ballista range, ballista damage to armor, or ballistas now consume a small amount of mana, but gain three base damage overall. Uh, so three to all of these things. So three times 11, so 33 health damage. Three times five, 15 armor damage. Three times five, 60 shield damage. I think that's how that works. Actually, let's find out. So if we take this, then theoretically this should go up to 75, 75, and I have no idea. Um, 65, 165. Let's see. Hey, yep, that's exactly what it does. So your individual increment, 1, 2, 3, whatever, times the multiplier equals the damage gain. So that's actually pretty significant. And with the number of uh, ballistas we have on the map right now, that's that's really significant. All right, let's build. Oh, we don't have quite enough. Let's build another ballista around that house just so we can get all the gold out of that with that we can. And yeah, and we're not super strong right now, but we don't have any meta progression upgrades, so I would expect we last to like I don't know most wave ten or eleven. Um, there's like a mini boss at 15, I think. He will most likely just destroy us. So. Not quite sure why those ballisters are not firing. Huh. That's weird. They like bugged out or something. Look, none of these are firing. Oh, because I don't have mana. Oh no, I completely screwed myself. Oh, okay. This is cool. They added a little chart at the end that shows you like how much gold and damage and stuff that your, or how much, yeah, how much damage your towers did and how much gold you spent on them. 
So look, even though we only bought one mortar, it did more damage than our ballistas. Oh, it's damage per gold spent. Okay. So almost as much as our ballistas, even though we spent a lot less gold. Okay. Well, lesson learned. Let's go ahead and do another run. My bad. My bad. Um, before we do that, I guess we'll uh, do a little, little meta progression. Um, we have 84 experience. So I'm just going to start by making sure that never happens again and just put baseline of sorcery. Um, so we generate one mana per second at the tower, no matter what. Now we can use things that cost mana. <laughs> God, I feel a little dumb about that. Uh, ah, well, you live, you learn, you get Geico, right? All right. Um, and then I'm also going to invest in gold drop. Enemies drop additional gold when they die. And I'm going to invest in additional gold at the beginning. And then additional options for card draws when we get our card draws. So we get an additional upgrade option. And then we have 14 left over. So we can't really unlock any of those things that I want to unlock. Um, we could potentially upgrade the mortar to get additional health damage. Um, additional damage to shields. It looks like all of the armor damage upgrades are automatically unlocked with the mortar to start, so that's kind of interesting. I definitely want to get like the additional range option, but that's too much. Okay, yeah, so I think that is it for now. Uh, we could get an upgrade for the Tesla coil. I haven't seen any streamers use this effectively, so I'm kind of curious as to what the niche is for this. It looks like it's pretty much designed to deal with shields, right? So that's interesting. So the Tesla coils for shields, the mortars for armor, and the blisters are for health. It's what it's kind of looking like. Okay, cool. Well, let's go ahead and hop on into another round, and I will try not to kill myself by taking all of my defenses offline accidentally. Okay. Ooh, this is a good start. Look at all these houses to start. Um, so before I waited and placed my ballista one tower, one tile out, but this time I'm actually going to place them right here because I do want um, my ballistas to be able to generate gold for me. So these are not going to be quite as effective as the other ones were. I don't know if we need any back here per se. I guess we will because if something gets really close, what's the range on these? Yeah, so if something gets really close, it'll attack. And I think it'll still get the shot off before it gets into the tower. So I think that's worth the investment. Okay. So we got kind of our baseline. And you can kind of see when we started the round here, these uh, houses all generate gold for us. I thought it was whenever the tower shot, but apparently it's at the beginning of the round. Alrighty, sorry, I had to go AFK for a minute or two for a work phone call, but let's see. Okay, I think I know what's going on here. Yes, alright. Continuing to expand out. We got a decent number of elevation chances here, but I kind of want to save some gold for when I get my first tower upgrade options. Um, in case we get like mortars or something, I want to have enough gold to actually be able to place them. So we're just going to kind of save because I'm pretty sure we're strong enough here to take care of everything. Yeah, it looks like it. Ooh. Uh, mortars are extremely good and I like them, but adding a 5% slow onto our ballistas, that seems too good to pass up. So I think that's what we're going to do instead. Yeah, because that's... That's extremely good. Um, we'll actually add another tower there. Um, well, another one here, maybe. So if we can just kind of stagger our uh, ballistas and do a couple ballistas every tile, that way we can add slows throughout. That'll help a lot with these hasted enemies. Because they can, they can be a real pain in the butt. 
All right, we got our first split here and there's a house as well, right where the split is. So that's kind of cool. I do wish my only complaint about this game is that there is no button that increases like the speed that they run. There needs to be a button that can increase the speed that they run. Um, they already run pretty fast, but when you have that really long path with nothing happening, it's kind of boring. Not as big of an issue when you have mortars, you know, because you're watching the mortars fly and all that, but right now we're purely crossbows. It's like, all right, let's sit and wait for 30 seconds while we wait for it to get over here. And expand out this way. Uh-oh, we've got a lot of splits there. This could end up being a bit of an issue. Yeah, we'll kind of build up a little bit of defenses here and on these tiles, because um, there's going to be a lot of splits there. Get to the tower! Yeah, so they got that haste. Uh, I don't know if we can actually... Yeah, some of them are going to get through, probably. Oh, nope, just barely. Those backline ones really helped us out there. Okay, cool. Um, Tesla, we could grab to deal with shields. We're not at the point of shields yet. We could grab my mana siphon so that we can start preparing to th use things that use mana. That's probably the way to go. Before we do that, though, we do need to, um, invest in this house here so it pays dividends over time. By not having super powerful towers to start here, we are helping our ballistas get stronger so that they can provide us a backline defense for when things get crazy later. So I don't mind that necessarily. I do kind of wish we had mortars already, but I think that this has its own merits as well. Uh-oh. Nope, oh, some got through. That's okay. Yeah, we're definitely starting to hit a point where we're not as strong as we need to be. It's going to expand that out a little ways, make a longer path there. The other thing is, it's when they get close to the tower that they get that haste buff. Um, so having a lot of towers closer to kind of decimate anything that tries to bum rush you, I feel like is pretty solid. Ideally, I'd like to have a kill zone before they get that rush. That's probably a better way to go, but just because we had so many houses here, it's hard to say no to that. Yeah, there's going to be a lot that gets through here. Okay, we definitely need to power spike. Maybe I should have taken a damage upgrade rather than the, uh, the mana siphon. All right, let's add some elevated towers, I guess. 210. Oh, so the blisters get more expensive when you add more modifiers on them? Because I swear it was 160 before. That's interesting. It does make sense that the cost of the tower would scale with the benefits it provides. I didn't realize that, that was the case, though. I think we might lose. Yep, that's it. Oh, we'll get a little bit more meta progression in and it'll be all good. All right. Um, so we got up to level nine. So that's a new record. Wonderful. So that gives us bonus experience whenever we get a new record. Um, obviously, all we have is ballistas, so not really much to compare it against. All right. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more upgrades and we'll do one more run for this episode. Uh, I definitely like... Hmm, actually I'm not sure what I like here. I think I would like, I have 95 experience, I'd like to unlock one of the other towers. I know we haven't had a chance to build a whole lot, period, but I think I'd like to unlock one of the other towers. I got work calling. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. So I think um, the thing I'd really like to get is encampment. 
um, because it gives you kind of a back line of a bunch of mines for things that bum rush your tower. Um, but it's, it's a little bit too much. Um, so instead, we're going to grab another tower. Um, now we already have health, armor, and shield taken care of. These follow the same kind of um, progressions. This is health, right? The middle one here is going to be armor based. You can tell what it's intended for based on what's unlocked by default. Now that said, you can add extra health damage onto flamethrowers or add extra shield damage onto flamethrowers as well. But just kind of the default, that's what it does to start sort of thing, right? Um, so your top top row is health, your middle row is shield, and your bottom, or sorry, top row is health, middle row is armor, bottom row is shield. Um, so instead of the Tesla coils, we could do the poison sprayers, which I've seen it's been very popular from different streamers. But again, I haven't seen people really give the Tesla coils a real chance, so I'd really like to see that. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to focus on. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that Tesla coil kind of jacked up is, is the goal. And we're going to make it do shield, or, uh, shield damage and health damage. We will take care of the armor with the mortars, most likely. So uh, we won't worry about that, or maybe the flamethrowers. But let's go ahead and add some health damage onto our Tesla coils. Now remember, these aren't permanent upgrades. These are cards that can get drawn. So we can add one additional health damage here. Electro hemorrhaging. All Tesla coils deal an extra 25% bleed damage. Bleed damage deals damage over time, which is particularly effective against health. Bleeding enemies also take additional damage to health. Boom. All Tesla coils deal another 25% bleed damage. Boom. Look at that extra damage. All right. And then we're going to do additional health damage. And I think that is all we have room for. We have five left over. Can we increase bleed on a baseline? Not yet. Next run. Next run. Okay, great. Let's do another one. And then that will be the last one for this video, and then I'll probably do a couple more today because I have a couple hours until my next appointment. Alright, um, so once again we get a starting house. I don't know if these are a trap. Maybe these are a trap. I don't know. Oh, you know what it is? The cost of the towers increases for each additional one you place down. So there's like a maintenance upkeep cost. So the more you spam, the more expensive they get. Oh, I wonder if there's any way to reduce that maintenance cost. That's that's an interesting way to do it. Okay. Um, it's a common kind of mechanic within tower defense games. Um, but usually it's like a, you get X amount of gold per round and then it like it reduces the amount X amount of gold you get per round. But the increasing the cost of the initial tower per tower type. That's actually, I like that better. That's a better way to do it. It encourages you to not just spam one thing. Okay, interesting. That said, we're going to spam one thing right now. <laughs> um, so, eh. Uh, yeah, sure. Just going to get some initial defenses kind of set up. Perfect. All right, good. I wanted to make sure it was going to cover this this path that we're going here. Nice. Oh man, this is good. This is really good. All right, and then I think we're going to place one more ballista here, and then we're going to pivot over to mortars. We definitely want a plus three mortar and a plus three mortar and a plus three mortar when we can. All right, we uh, this is actually a really good map layout for us. So I really like this. Um, our mortars should probably focus on highest health. Actually, most armor and then highest health. Okay, cool. And then our backline ballistas, we're going to do um, least health for that one. And probably put one more down, but 
They are getting kind of expensive. Yeah, so this way the mortars aren't all automatically targeting the same thing as the ballistas. So we'll have less wasted mortar shots. Alright. Okay, we'll expand out. We got another house here, so we could potentially place some ballistas around it. At the moment, the blisters are not too expensive, so that might be worth it. Or it might just be worth it to wait for a Tesla coil. Because this looks like it'd be a good spot for a Tesla, because it's like a circular attack. Here would be another really good spot. I do like the idea of having it a little bit further up so we can kind of shred the shield before it gets to our scary area. So I think that that's probably the way to go. Now, in order to maintain the Tesla, we will need some mana, but we do have a baseline small amount of mana. I think the slow to start is probably more valuable. Yeah, I think so. At least the mortars can kind of get over that direction. Another mortar right here would be really nice. That way we have kind of like an advanced one. And then that one of course is going to focus on armor first. Again, it is important to continue building ballistas as we span out just so we can apply that slow because we don't have a frost tower yet. Oh man, this is a long single path. This is really nice. Uh, might actually sell this back one. Yeah. Then we're gonna put progress or priority on armor and then most health. Excellent. Uh, I definitely like the idea of adding a ballista here, because it's going to get all the way up and around this path, and then all the way down and around this path. I think right there is the correct spot. Oh, off by one. Demolishes for 130. Okay, that's what it actually costs to place, so that's good. It, it refunds back exactly what you pay. Alright, one more down. Yeah. There we go. So we're getting that whole path. Oh, we're going to need two of them, it looks like. Okay. That's fine. There we go. So now we have kind of this whole pathway covered with the slope. So that mortar just has a little bit more time to bombard them. And then once we build our Tesla towers, which are going to go like in here probably, um, they'll have a little bit more time too. Here would be a really good spot for it too, but I'm thinking this would be better for something like a flamethrower if we could unlock. Oh, I don't think we actually have access. No, we do have access to a flamethrower right now, don't we? No, maybe we don't. I think that's one you have to buy. Try to remember. Uh, yeah, because we only have three to start. And it's uh, Tesla, Mortar, and Ballista, so. But yeah, we're doing good. We're already up to wave level 9, which is a record for us, so go us. Sorcery, just mana generation per second. Definitely great. Um, we're going to take that because we're definitely going to be doing Tesla coils later. So, that's definitely the way to go right now. We haven't got a split yet. This is extremely fortunate. Extremely fortunate. I might just pause the time which it takes for the first wave to run and actually get within range of our tower so you guys don't have to sit there every time. Um, it might cause some funky cuts in the music, but 
hopefully, you know, it's just, it'll feel a little better for you guys to be not sitting there waiting for them to actually get to our defenses. Unless we have something relevant that we're talking about, you know, as they're running. Okay, so this is starting to look a little sketchier. They're starting to get through our initial line of defense. Look how much damage that did to the shield there. Or to the armor. Nice. Yeah, our mortars are really strong. Those are definitely worth investing in. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Okie dokie. Lots of interruptions today. I am back. All right. Um, 429 gold, 425 for another mortar. I do think another mortar would make sense. Uh, what's the range on these? Fairly far. So what if we threw one right here? Oh, it's a plus two. There's a plus three. There's another plus three. I kind of wanted to save that for a Tesla tower, but... Maybe that's better for a mortar anyway. Because we don't have Teslas yet. So mortars are starting to get kind of expensive. <laughs> and that'll go all the way back to the base. So that's good. This one actually has quite a bit of wasted area. Um, perhaps that should move up instead. Let's demolish that and rebuild it. That's fine. Cool. All right. Let us proceed. Oh, we probably just lost the upgrade levels on it that we got in from the shots it fired, but that's fine. It hadn't gotten too much done, so not the end of the world. Okay, within range. Um, I'm going to have this one target... The slowest enemy. Just for something a little different. And then second priority is going to be most armor. Last priority is going to be most shield. That's kind of going to be our boss. Our tower is designed to hit bosses. Okay, we're doing okay. Very nice. Wonderful. Alrighty. Yeah, I think we will invest some ballistas around the house up here. Get that slow in place and also get a little bit more passive income going. I think it's probably worth it. Okay, so it's not just the beginning of the round. It looks like it ticks periodically extra gold throughout the round as well. So that's good to know. <laughs> there we go. We got our first battering ram. Slash mobile bunker unit. And out of it pops a bunch of enemies. But they're easy enough to deal with, so yay! All right, Tesla coil, let's go. 200 gold, that's not that expensive. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. Sweet. There's actually a lot of really sharp bends. So here, 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 here. There's like a lot of great places for a Tesla coil, um, which is awesome. So let's just start off here as our first one. And we want the priority to be on shield and then health and then armor. Okay. 
We all get stronger over time. Probably gonna need to get some upgrade cards for it as well. So it can do significant health damage. If we last that long. We're doing okay, um, but we could certainly be doing better, that's for sure. Okay, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Another work phone call. Oh my... Alrighty. Back to it. Ooh, nice. Alright, so we have 471 gold, we have our first Tesla tower down, it is doing 90 damage to shields. Our next best shield thing is 130, but it fires a lot slower. Uh, 10 RPM, 60 RPM, so this fires 6 times faster. So 6 times 90, right? So that's 540 effective damage in the same amount of time that this one is going to do 130 effective damage. So... Um, clearly a lot better against shields. All right, continuing on. Um, I do think, I don't know if getting a Ballista here for the slow is going to be worth it because it's going to be a combination of slow and uh, like money generation. So it could be worth it just because it'll provide a slow for the Tesla tower. I think, I think that's probably worth it to throw one there. I'm a little up in the air about it, but and we're just actually going to stack this plateau with Teslas um, because it's some good elevation bonuses. And if we can just knock out those um, shields before they even make it through, that's great. I mean, obviously, it's not going to do a ton to the armored enemies and to the health um, enemies, but um, they will slowly ramp up over time, you know, and you can see they fire very, very fast. Um, so I think I think they'll end up being pretty strong in the end. We just gotta give it a give it a good chance. Wonderful. Actually, they're doing a lot better against the health than I thought they'd be doing, so that's good. All right. Okay, so fast. Beautiful. Alright. Um, so this is looping back on itself, which is kind of cool. Um, that means this mortar is going to get even more benefit, and it might also make a good case for putting another mortar in here if it's going to cover um, this like whole area. Oh, there's our boss. So it's 425 for our next Tesla, 500 for our next Mortar. Hmm. Interesting choice, interesting choice. Yeah, so this Ballista back here is actually firing down this pathway, so that is cool. Could get some more Teslas up here just to kind of slowly chunk it away, but I, I like the idea of having just one quick death zone, you know, and kind of putting ballistas around it to slow things. I do think it is worth it to put another mortar tower like here for instance because it's going to have just great range. It's just going to hit stuff all over the place. Maybe another one here as well because it's still going to get like all of this. Yeah, this is like Honestly, a dream, dream map setup. Can't ask for any better. That said, we don't have much meta progression yet, so we probably won't make it too far. But it's still pretty exciting. In fact, Ogi might be the end of us here. He has, he has a lot of health. 
Holy cow. Nah, I think we're gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yay for mortars. Ballista to continue applying slows there. Excellent. So we can gain extra damage to mortars. Sounds good. Um, I haven't really been paying attention to our mana generation. These do use mana, though, so perhaps getting the ability to siphon additional mana is a good idea. Additional slow on our frost bolts also seems like it would be a good idea. I really want these to continue to pop off, though, so I think I'm going to do the mana siphon. So we place these around little mana crystals and it increases our mana generation by one per second for each mana siphon that we put down. And it does actually look like those do not scale in cost. So that's, that's really nice. Okay, so let's expand out, continuing a straight path. Wow, this is honestly a dream map. All right, great. So we're up to 11 mana per second, I think. That'll probably be sufficient for what we have and are planning on building, frankly. Um, ooh, we got gravestones. New resource. Um, there are some uh, towers that will harvest the souls of the dead from the graves, which is kind of cool. Or taxes the graves, whatever. Okay, so there's our first shielded enemies. Okay. These little guys here, whatever they are. Looks like zombies, creepers almost. So once they get up to our Teslas, we'll see their their true power. Yeah, our Teslas are starting to get kind of expensive actually. They don't hit hard on each individual hit, but they hit very fast. So they're very consistent damage. Oh yeah, it just shredded that shield. That's awesome. We are going to make this one prioritize armor, then shields. Cool. Wonderful. Okay. And then do one more of those. I think we're okay, um, but just in case. Okay, yeah, and this is going back towards our main tower area. So that's cool. That means it could potentially loop this way, and then this will be in range, which would be great if that's the case. As it is, though, just the way it's looping in general is giving us a lot of value from some of these early units we built. So that gives us reason to build another ballista there for more gold income, so that's great. Diagonals don't count with houses, it's only the cardinal directions, unfortunately, but understandable at the same time. <clears throat> we just have this giant area up here that's like a safety zone for them. Look at this hill. This hill is just filled with plus threes. Oh, should probably build some mortars and stuff on those. 
Yeah, mortars are probably the way to go. And then some ballistas to like support it. Because good god, that's that's a lot of plus threes. Yeah, did you see those Tesla towers just shred? That's that's looking good. Look at that. That's even destroying like shields and stuff. Holy cow. Or even destroying health and stuff. And we don't even have any health upgrades on it yet. Right on. It does look like it only hits one at a time, even though it looks like it's an area of effect. It looks like it only targets one at a time. So that's something that's kind of surprising, I guess. So target priority probably matters quite a lot on this then. So we're going to make them target most shield as our first priority. And then most health as our second. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Um, more ballistas to get slows and provide additional passive income. Makes sense to me. Okay, yep, it is going to loop back and dead end here. We're going to see the portal. Oh, we got our first treasure chest. Let's open that up. All ballistas gain one range or deal one to armor. Definitely one range. That's, uh... That's, that's fantastic. Now, ballistas do have an armor multiplier of 5, so while it says plus 1 damage, it's actually plus 5 damage to armor. So that's something to keep in mind there. Whenever it says plus 1 or whatever, you have to multiply that by the multiplier to get the true value. That guy's evil looking and super duper fast. Interesting. We should have something that targets the fastest unit. Um, let's have this target fastest. Actually, in general, my ballistas that are there to slow for kill zones could probably, half of them should probably target fastest. That way we can start slowing down those super fast guys. Yeah, that's fine. All right, uh, let's go ahead and throw our plus three, our first plus three mortar here. Good. Actually, I'm going to move it over to here. There we go. It's maximum like effectiveness and range. And then we need another one here. This is going to prioritize most armor. And then most health. Because those are our two highest multipliers. Let's see how our Teslas do with this guy. Wonderful. Just shredded, just shredding the, the shield guys. Fantastic. Love it. Yeah, I think the Teslas are, are definitely underappreciated. They seem they seem pretty good actually. Okay. We can give ballistas even more range. We can give mortars plus one damage to armor, which in effect, because we have a 15 armor multiplier, basically means we're giving plus 15 damage to armor. Or we can make ballistas consume a small amount of mana and gain base three damage to everything. We do seem to have a lot of mana generation. I don't think that that would be a problem. And it would make our mortar or our ballistas considerably more effective damage wise. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just see if this sucks out all of our mana. Because <laughs> it might just do that. We'll see. Oh, we have lots of mana crystals on the map, and we have plenty of gold, plenty of gold income um, to tap into them. So it's really not a big deal for us to just put some more mana siphons out. I'm just going to be preemptive about it, because I have a feeling that this is going to drain our mana something fierce. Um, so let's just be preemptive. 
So just kind of keep an eye on our mana throughout this round and see how we're doing. You can already see it kind of dipping from the Ballista usage, but wait till we get the Ballistas and the Teslas firing at the same time. That's that's the part I'm worried about. Yeah, look at that. Uh, we are regenerating as fast as we're using it though, so I think we're gonna be fine. We just don't want to ever be in a situation where stuff cannot fire because there's no mana, right? We want to make sure we have that mana battery fully charged and ready. All right, that's cool. Um, I wonder if the mana siphons gain benefit from <laughs> elevation as far as like effectiveness. No, it doesn't look like it does. Okay, well that's fine. That's that's understandable. Also wondering if you've placed it on a different level, if it'll still siphon it. So plus 21, plus 22. Okay, so it does not have to be on even terrain to actually siphon from the crystal. So that's... Okay, so... It does, kind of. So if it's above the crystal, it'll siphon it, but if it's below it, it will not. Is what I'm seeing there. Yes, that appears to be correct. Interesting. Good to know. I don't want to waste any of this this landmass siphoning that crystal because um, this is these plus threes are just way too valuable. Cool. Yeah. Again. The only thing I wish I had was a button to make everything move faster. Otherwise, this game is freaking phenomenal. Like, honestly, phenomenal. And the most interesting thing here is we only have one path and never branch. So when we expand here, I think that's the end of our map. We don't have any more expansion options. So I don't... I'm curious, maybe we'll just make a new... I don't know what happens here. Did we just break the game? I don't think it's supposed to do that, because I know you can go up quite high on level. We're nowhere near the end of the level range. I think it's like 35 or 45 is the highest level or something like that. It's not, it's not right now, that's for sure. We are definitely not there. Um, so interested to see what happens at the end of this round. Like what happens next? There's not going to be anywhere to expand to. Did I just, did, did I break the game? And it's not even something I did. It just is. Huh. We'll find out. And stuff's starting to get close to getting through, though. Which is definitely worrisome. Definitely, definitely worrisome. As things start busting through to more and more ballistas, we're going to need those mana siphons. I think we're good, though. I think we got plenty of mana generation. 25 is a lot. So I think we're okay. Okay. Um, more mortars or more Teslas? That's the question. I am seeing that it looks like the shields are the bigger problem for us at the moment. So we're actually going to make one of our mortars specialize in shield damage. And we're going to do this by making its first priority be the shields. And then we're actually going to do upgrade shield damage. So we're going to just jack up the shield damage of this one unit by force leveling it. So now it does as much shield damage as it does armor damage. So shield priority first, armor priority second, and then we'll just um, level it up one more time give it equal shield and armor damage. Should be good. As soon as we kill something. There we go. Alright, so equal shield and armor damage from that one. And it should actually slowly probably pull into more, more shield damage. Oh, we got another wave. Okay, so that's, that's what happens. Um, entirely close the path. I guess I'll just die then. So it doesn't even give me the option to be like, hey, let me uh, proceed with the next wave. It's just like, boom, 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 boom. It just goes. 
Okay, cool. So we didn't break the game, that's good. And we got an achievement called I guess I'll just die then, which is pretty freaking ominous. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and I think I'm just gonna actually level this shield damage up even more. Because I really do feel like shields are going to be a big issue right now. We got these Teslas here, but I do want to just kind of chunk things down a little bit more as we go. Okay. Now the question I have next, I guess, is are we going to continue to get more upgrade options or are we fully upgrade as much as it's going to let us upgrade? Because we did not get that many upgrades, <laughs> to be honest. So hopefully that's not it. Uh, we definitely need to get some ballistas around these Tesla towers to provide some slow support. Yeah, I think right here is a good spot for it. Once we have the money. Yeah. Yeah, that'll help. Nice. So as soon as we fully clear this wave, the next one will trigger, presumably. Um, hopefully it gives us some upgrade options. I think another, te or another uh, ballista right here makes sense. What's the range? Yeah, perfect. We're basically just providing slow support for this little loop with these ballistas. That's the idea. Plus a little bit more damage because they do they do a good chunk of damage now um, with the multipliers and the cards that we got. So. They're getting a little expensive. Not gonna lie. Okay. Oh cool. We did get another upgrade option. So. Uh, additional 5% slow, we can make our blisters even stronger, or we can make our Tesla coils do extra damage to health. Currently our Tesla coils are doing 84, 84 damage to health. It is a 6 damage multiplier. We can make it... So that will give us essentially 7 extra damage per fire, and they fire at a very rapid rate. Um, so that plus, anytime you have a plus 1 damage the faster the fire rate, the more effective that is. Because um, if you're firing three times a second and add plus one to that, and that one is multiplied by five, you're adding, you know, 15 damage per second. Versus if you fire one time per second and it's a 10 modifier, you're only adding 10 damage. Um, so it scales significantly with attack speed is what I'm trying to say. And Tesla coils are our fastest firing things because they have a 60 RPM. The ballistas have a 20 RPM, so the Tesla coils are three times faster than anything else, so that's by far our biggest upgrade. That's my rationale, anyway. Hopefully that all makes sense. Excellent. Yeah, just cut right through that health. Alrighty. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and get some more Tesla coil damage in here. Really just kind of make this death. Just make this a lightning field. Just light it up. They walk through here, they die. That's the idea. They are getting pretty expensive, but I kind of want to fill the last two slots here. I don't know if it's fully worth it at this point, but... Maybe we put in Ballista here. Or Ballista here and another Tesla Coil there. We'll start with the Tesla coil. Excellent. Next wave. 
We're up to level 23. Uh, I don't remember how many waves there are, but I watched Wanderbot, um, and he got to the final wave on like his 11th or 12th playthrough or something like that. Um, he had a lot of meta progression unlocked at that point. I'm going to consider this a victory if I'm able to make it to the final wave. Um, but we haven't even seen the second, the second boss monster, and there are three boss monsters, so we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Okie dokie, we're back. Sorry, a lot of things came up. I don't remember what we are talking about, but here we go again. Uh, level 23, I think we were talking about the different bosses. So there are three bosses. We already defeated the first one. I think they're every 10 levels, and the first one starts at level 15. So we should have a second Oogie at level 25, which is going to be like a robot version of the Oogie. And then the final boss is the big brained Oogie, which is just a giant floating brain, which is kind of different. Um, I think it'll be just fine, honestly. We've got quite a lot of build up already. Um, I would like to get another Tesla coil in this corner here, and then just kind of spam ballistas as much as possible in this like kill zone area so that these Tesla coils will just do a lot of the work for us, and then the mortars will also just apply damage throughout the pathing of the enemy's progress. And I think that should be pretty good. What is that? Is that a sheep? That is a demon sheep. Alright. And then that's a vampire. I think. That's definitely a demon sheep. <laughs> Maybe it's a ghost. I don't know. It looks like a sheep. Like a sheep. Bah. And I'm getting blown up on my phone. Alrighty. Boom. Next wave. I like that it just goes next and it doesn't make you click confirm when there's no more pathways to open up. I dig that. Alright. Lots of ballista spam in there. Um, probably should spend gold just leveling up our three elevation tower as well. And we probably have enough just combined shield damage that make the most sense to then focus on uh, health damage after that point. I think we should have armor taken care of, and these things are not meant to deal with armor. Um, so I think we just continue to upgrade the health multipliers on this bad boy. So let's we'll pour our gold into that. Make it do as much damage as possible. Two twenty-eight at six strikes per minute. It's not bad. It'll be interesting to see at the very end of the run which towers actually did the most damage, because we have fairly equal investment, I think, between the towers. So we have eight Teslas, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven mortars. So we could throw down one more mortar just to make it even. And then we have, have, we have a lot of ballistas, but they're lower cost towers. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense. But it'll be interesting to see because we did invest in everything. We didn't really do anything that make the mortars stronger. They're just kind of strong to start, um, other than putting them on three elevation surfaces. So they're always doing like max damage. Yeah, that works pretty good there. It's kind of evaporates their health. I like it. Man, these guys haven't seen any action in so long. Here we go. This guy felt sorry for them. Okay. We'll throw down one more mortar. Uh, we should have... There's another plus three there. Do we have a better spot? I think that's probably... 
plus three there, but that's a lot of wasted. Oh, there we go. That's perfect right there, I think. Or right here. Right here is probably the best spot. Yeah, I think so. All right. All towers gain crit chance equal to their level, but lose one base damage. That actually hurts the damage of the Teslas a lot. Uh, Bliss does now consume a medium amount of mana, but gain three additional base damage, or additional slow on the blisters, or additional range on the blisters. At this point, I think we risk being overwhelmed with enemy speed once we start getting the Blitz Rush waves. Um, so either increasing the range or the slow percent would help with that. I think we're going to increase the slow percent. And we have a lot of gold, um, so I guess we'll get a little bit more investment going. Um, build one more mortar, and then we'll build another Tesla soon. Probably put one up here so that we get a like an advanced forward base Tesla. Alrighty, silly work phone calls. Alright, we have our second boss, wave 25, Zombie Oogie. It is the same giant goblin troll from before, except for now he's a zombie! I actually thought he was a robot, but it's, it's a zombie. Anything making it through? Doesn't look like it. Cool. Uh, I mean, we put a Tesla coil here. That's, a, that's an alright location. And of course, priority is going to be most shield. Ooh, this guy might make it through. Um, let's level up our shield damage. Actually, let's sell this and level up our shield damage to the moon. And we have a lot of shield damage and he is actually walking through it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, that's problematic. All right, uh, demolish that one. Build another mortar. Have this do shield damage. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Okay. We might be at the end of our life here. Need more meta progression. like six times. All right. Okay, we are good. Um, I'll need to buy back that uh, Tesla tower I sold, but we got through the zombie Ogi, who is clearly designed to wreck you with shields. So far we have 100% tower health, but I have a feeling these little racetrack guys are going to make it through. What are those? They're like little mini zombie poop babies or something. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think we kill them. I think they're just, they're a little too speedy, and a little too much shield. Maybe. Zombie Oogie's gonna go down, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, they all made it through. So there goes our perfect game. But, guess who's back? Defeat Zombie Oogie in a single defense. Boom, that's us. And we got treasures. Plus does deal extra health damage or the crit chance. We're not going to do the crit chance because it lowers our Tesla damage too much. So extra health damage on Blitz I'll take that. And extra health damage on Blitz I'll take that. <laughs> and uh, all Tesla coils gain one damage to shields. That's amazing. I'll take that. Yeah, hopefully the more Tesla coil upgrades we can get, the better. Um, to be honest and we're just gonna get we're gonna spam a few more teslas because at this point shields are the only thing stopping us um, so that's what we need to invest in um, dealing with 
and then maybe perhaps perhaps a few more slows a few more ballistas to like slow things down but uh, mostly it's the shields that are killing us getting a forward based uh, shield wrecker would be helpful um, so we can try to chunk away shield from just random units before they get too far up but I think that it's okay waiting actually the zombie ogi was was an issue um, big brain ogi is gonna be very hard to defeat with our current setup so we're definitely gonna need more damage mortars just have the highest coverage range and we have so many of these like high plateau mortar spots here that that, that seems like a good investment right, some of these guys made it a little further than I'm comfortable with what are these guys like little vampire dudes and little demons I think they have a lot of health add an extra slow as well get gold out of the extra slow actually. There we go. Uh oh. Whoa! Mm, I don't know that we have enough damage here to kill them. I think this might be the end. Wave 26 is not bad for a third attempt. We get some more meta progression upgrades and we're gonna be we're gonna be pretty well set. But yeah, I think this is the end here. I don't think there's any way we survive this one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. We have to kill one of these and I don't think that's happening. Oh. Alright. That was a good run. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let's look at the stats, see what did the most damage. Um, damage per gold, so cost effectiveness wise anyway. This time, the ballistas did the most damage per gold spent. Interesting. We did invest the most upgrades in it though, so that does make sense. Um, as far as just raw damage goes, our mortars did the most raw damage. Tesla's te mortars and ballistas did the most. Tesla's did the least. We did invest a decent amount in the Teslas. They didn't do as much as I would have expected. And actually, the mortars did more shield damage than the Teslas did, and the Teslas are specifically meant to deal shield damage. So maybe those Teslas aren't quite as good as I'd hoped. They're fun. But perhaps just investing in Mortar and Ballista and then grabbing something else to deal shield damage, like the uh, the Poison Sprayer, perhaps, is the way to go. Uh, we got so much experience there. Look at that. We've got 1,000 experience. Dear God. Yeah, we're going to be able to get lots and lots of upgrades. We'll do that at the beginning of the next episode before we, we load out. But... Uh, I think that the way to go is going to be investing in a shield thing. So either poison, lookout, or particle cannon. Um, particle cannon sounds pretty cool. That's probably what we'll do. The lookout tower is an interesting concept. It says spots enemies and adds this tower's stats to all damage the marked target takes. So this lookout tower can mark a boss, and then since the lookout tower does bonus to shield damage, then every tower hitting that boss is going to do bonus to shield damage. So that's actually really strong. So I'll probably do those two as my next investments, and then do some just account-wide progression upgrades to make it easier to get through. I think we're going to be able to beat the single lane map relatively soon, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this game. It is really fun um make sure you like favorite share subscribe comment down below and all that stuff and we'll see you next time bye y'all